put on my heart for us today that I want to share with us. Um, let's start with a quick word uh, of scripture. Can you please turn with me to Matthew, the sixth chapter, and the 19th through the 21st verse? That's Matthew 6, 19 through 21. And it's funny because um, Pastor Emmanuel came up and preached one of my scriptures. And I was like, oh, we know God is getting ready to do something because whenever that happens, that means he wants to make a point of something. So let's turn to our scripture. It says in verse 19, do not store up your, your, your ah, sorry, do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourself treasures in heaven where moth and vermin do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will also be. So the title of the scripture of the sermon that we have for day, today is entitled The Retirement Plan. The Retirement Plan. So we're going to talk a little bit today about where you are investing your time, your effort, everything that you have. Where are you putting that? Let's start off with a question because I always like to start off with a question. And my question of the day is this. How many of you have been paying attention to the stock market this year? Anybody? Have you seen how much it's been tanking lately? Question number two. How many of you have a 401k plan? Raise your hand. Yeah, you try not to look at it lately now, huh? It's funny, you spend all your life trying to take your money and put it into this, into this thing called the stock market because you're trying to invest so that when you're ready to retire, you have enough money that you don't have to be eating cat food. But for some reason, you're putting all this money into there and you have literally no control realistically about what your future is going to look like in the end. You can control it to some degree, but a lot of that is just left up to whatever is going on in the stock market. So it's dangerous when you put your money in there. You, you, you just got to trust and believe in the stock market. And that's not a very reliable thing to have to trust and believe in. Trust me. I was talking to Sister Audrey one time, and she was like just so sad about how how much her stock had dropped and her 401k was just plummeting. And I was like, yeah, I know, I feel your pain. You're not alone. The last question I have to you is, do you know the difference between a 401k and an IRA? Both programs are designed to help you invest in your future. The 401k, on the other hand, has an added benefit. Usually you do have a 401k as part of your company, and when you put a certain percentage in there, percentage in, the company will match your investment up to a certain percentage. So if you put 10% of your income in there, they'll put an extra 5% in there. For, no, for, for doing nothing extra, they just automatically give you extra money to put in there. The IRA is all about you. It's whatever you contribute, that's what you get. The other benefit that you get from the 401k is that, well, it's not such a benefit, it's one of the things that you have to um, adhere to, is that a 401k, you don't get to sp specify specific stocks that you want to invest in. You have to invest in what they call funds, mutual funds, which is really just a collection of small funds. And hold on, I'm going to get to a, I'm going to bring this around to church in a minute. Don't worry. This isn't a financial seminar. <laughs> but I need you just to understand how they work so we can get to what God is showing us. You have to invest in a group of stocks. It's not necessarily exactly the one stock that you want to invest in, but you get to invest in them all. Now, one of the things that God was showing me is that he's trying to deal with us about our investments and where we are putting our efforts and our intentions in. When I looked at the definition of what an investment in it is read, there were three different definitions. The action or process of investing money for profit or material result. The second one was 
a thing that is worth buying because it will be profitable or useful in the future. The third de definition is an act of devoting time, effort, or energy to a particular undertaking with the expectation of a worthwhile result. I think I like that last definition the best. Now, what God was showing me is about the 401k is it's kind of like our spiritual life. We have to invest in the things of God. You see, many people take all their time and all their energy and all their effort and they put it into their jobs or they put it into their stock market or they put it into buying some houses or all these different things just so that we can try to prepare for our future. But God says that there is a future that is far more important than what kind of money you'll have when you're 60, 70, 80 years old. There's a future that is going to be spanned out over the rest of our life. And we put so much time into our natural life, and he's asking us, but what about your spiritual retirement plan? What kind of investments are you putting into your spiritual investment plan? What does your spiritual portfolio look like? Now, the thing about it is a lot of us want to put our investments even in our spiritual life into specific things. But God said just like our 401k, you don't always get to choose what you're going to invest in. Sometimes when God says, as a church, as a ministry, we're going to invest in this. This is what we're going to do as a group. It's up to you to decide whether you're going to join in and invest in that or not. Many times we say, for example, we do our, our family night. And this week, this time we did our family night and we did pickleball. And we had a lot of fun and we had a good time and people enjoyed it. But not everybody likes pickleball. But it's not really about what you like. It's about can you do something as a church body together in unity. You don't have to come there and, and even play pickleball. But you could come and support. You could come and laugh at me. I'm not, I'm not saying it's got to be your cup of tea, but we have to learn that when we all move together in unity, when we all learn to work together, God will bless and multiply our investment. See, there's a multiplication that happens when we, multi when we do investments together as one. And again, it's not always about what you want to do. For example, last time we did it, we did pickleball. Our next one, I've been told, is, I think, painting. And we're all going to come out and we're going to do a group painting. Now, I know good and well that I am probably the, most, the least artistic person in this entire church. I fully concede that. But you better believe I'm going to be front and center getting my Picasso on, and when it's all done, I might even sell you my masterpiece. <laughs> now, this is not something that I typically indulge in or enjoy doing it. But there is something to be said about giving and investing your time and your energy into the things of God. What is God trying to get us to do together corporately? That's what we need to invest in. So God is trying to teach us that he wants us to invest in certain things. And he wants us to put it into our 401k. Because that's when we get that extra additional match. See, when we do something and we invest in something that, again, is not necessarily that we like, but it's what God is calling all of us to do, he adds a special return on your investment. He gives you a little bit of extra when you do that. That's why when God says when one or two are gathered together in his name, that there he'll be in the midst. And when one can put a thousand, but two can put how many? He didn't say 2,000, which would be the natural progression, but he adds a multiplier when we learn how to work together. Amen. See, too many times we want to stand alone and do our own thing. We act like we have our own specific ministry, 
But God says this is not an individual ministry. This is a group ministry. We are a body. So as such, we have to work together to do the work that God has called us all to do. And as a result, he adds a multiplier every time that we decide to work together. And he blesses that, and he blows on it and causes it to grow. And that's why when we do something together, and we're together on one accord, he can do great things through and with us. But again, we have to invest in our 401k. We have to give ourselves over to that. Now, one of the things that happens when you start your 401k for the first time is your investor will ask you some questions. And one of the questions that they tend to ask you when you first start is, is how old are you? And the reason why they do this is, is simple. See, when you start a 401k at a very young age, you have a lot of time to invest in it. And so they could take a different approach at how they invest for you. They don't have to be as aggressive when you have a long time to save. But when you're older and you come to a 401k and you start putting your money, you only have a small window. So they have to invest very aggressively for you. So what I have understood from this is when we invest, to my young people, I want to say this to you. I'm going to be your, your, your spiritual advisor today. I'm going to give you some advice for your future. You see, when you come to God young and you learn how to invest in God from a young age, you have a special gift that we don't have. See, you got the opportunity to invest in your future at a young age. That's why the Bible says when you train up a child in a way that they should go, when they get older, they will not depart from it. See, why? Is because you establish good habits when you learn early how to do the things of God. When you learn how to invest at a young age in the things of God, it becomes part of who you are. See, when you're older and you've established all these bad habits, it's hard to get them out of yourself. It's hard to win after year over year over year. You got used to making some bad investments. It's much, much harder to go back and fix things after the fact. But if God can get his hands on you when you're early and you're young, if God could get you to invest in God when you're young, if God could get you to realize the importance of knowing how good God is when you're a child, then you can even avoid a lot of the pain and the heartache and the torment that some of us had to go through because we came to the party late. See, God wants to add a multiplier to you when you come to God early. In, in, in financial terms, it's called compound interest. See, when you put $100 in today and you get 5% on it this month, then guess what? The next month you got your $100 plus the 5%, plus the next month you get a 5 more percent on top of the 105%. You see, every time there is an investment, it grows, and it grows, and it grows more and more. And God is saying, I need you to make some good spiritual investments. I need you to evaluate your spiritual portfolio. Because what's going to happen is many of us are not investing in the things of God, and we're running out of time. And what's going to happen is someday you're going to need to make a withdrawal from your retirement plan. And you aren't going to have anything in there in order to be able to draw from. you got to put something in it to get something out of it. So God is saying, what are you investing in? What are you putting your efforts in? What are you putting your time in? What are you putting your finances in? What are you investing in? God said, what are you doing with your spiritual capital? 
Are you putting it into the things of God? And I'm not saying just because you're, that, that when you're older, you can't come to God late and you aren't going to have a retirement plan. No, no, that's okay. You can come to God anytime. As long as you're still breathing, he'll take you into the program. I promise you that. So don't think you're too old to come to God. He's still got a place for you in his program. And don't worry, he'll still make sure that when you're ready to retire, when you go to see your maker, when you go to the, to the kingdom to see your father, there's still room in the kingdom for you. He's not going to forget about you. He's not going to kick you out. And trust me, you still got to have a mansion in the sky by and by. God still has room for you. But he wants to know what are you investing in. Another one of the questions they ask you when you're investing is, what are your expectations? You see, if, if you come to them with $100 and you expect them to turn that into a million dollars, by the time you're ready to, 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 to retire, you're going to be sorely, sorely disappointed. Because you got to do some work. But you got to set your expectations correctly. See, many times we invest in things, but our mindset is not correct. We, 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 we kind of invest in things thinking, oh, I'm going to do this and I'm going to invest in this person. We, we see a young person, we say, they got potential. I'm going to go and I'm going to shape them and I'm going to mold them and I'm going to make them into something great and spectacular. And, and God is saying, since when did you become a potter? You're not a potter. At the best, you're just a, somebody that can uh, a container to pour some water on the vessel while I continue to shape and mold and I say, pour a little water here. And as I start to cultivate what that person will be, I might let you have a little bit of input into their lives, but you are not the potter for sure. So, we, so God is saying we need to make sure that our mindset is correct when we start to invest in things. Because when we invest incorrectly, in the wrong way, then we can lead to peril. We do a bad investment. So let me, let, let me further on that explanation. So sometimes we get these individuals and we think we're, gonna, we think we're cultivating the next pastor that's going to take over the world. And we go in and we're feeding all this stuff into them and we're trying to minister to them. But we're not doing it from the right place. Many times we're doing it because we think if we pour into them and they're successful, then people will look at us and say, wow, he mentored them. And we're really not investing in them for them. It's because we're trying to clam on to what might be from them in order to see if it can help us be elevated. So when people see them, they could say, look what he did for them. But God said, that's not how this works. That's not how this works. See, if you invest in them and they become successful and people give you all the glory and all the accolades, then guess what? Your investment will result in you getting the rewards and the accolades from those guys. But that will not result to a translation of you being blessed in the kingdom of God. You know why? Because the word of God says that when we get our praise and we get our accolations from the people on the word, it, world, then that is all we are ever going to get. If you really want to be a blessing to that person, then the word of God says that when you pour into his life, when we pour into their life, that the left hand doesn't know what the right hand is doing. In other words, you don't go into it so that you can puff yourself up. You do it because there is a need in that individual. You do it because you love them. You do it because God said, that is my child. I need you to pour into them. We got to have the right mindset when we give our investment. What is your expectations? What are you doing? How are you investing? God says we have to use our spiritual wisdom 
and make sure that we evaluate what we're doing because otherwise what we meant to be good will turn into something bad. Have you ever seen when people pour into a stock, I know that I've done it, you see something good, you see that it has potential, but it's not the right time God didn't tell you to do it. So you pour all your money, you pour all your money into this stock and you think it's going to take off and you think it's a good investment and then all of a sudden something goes wrong. And what once upon a time you thought was going to be a blessing unto you turns into a curse unto you. And all that you have invested is wasted because that was not what you were supposed to do. That's not what God has asked you to do, but you invested anyway. And all of a sudden, that investment becomes a bad investment. Now, the other thing to understand is our expectations have to be correct when we do begin to work with someone. See, we have to realize that every time you pour into something does not necessarily mean that it's going to turn into the most fruitful and most amazing thing you've ever seen. Sometimes your job is not to turn that seed into a flower. Sometimes all you're supposed to do is plant the seed. Let me show you something in the Word of God. Let me show you what the word of God says. Let me show you what he says. Let me say, 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 say. Let me give you some word of God. Y'all getting ahead of me. Come on now, y'all. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. Where are you at? Come on. Okay, in, in first, uh, first Corinthians 3, 6 through 9. And it says, I planted the seed. Apollos watered it, but God has been making it grow. So neither the one that plants nor the one that waters is anything. I think we have overestimated our value. I think we have overplayed our hand. See, all we are is a water bucket. All we are is a it is a shovel in order to plant the seed. But God said that someone planted, someone watered, but it is God that has made it to grow. So neither the one that plants nor the one that waters is anything, but only God. Say only God. But only God who makes things grow. And then it goes on to say the one that plants and the one that waters have one purpose one purpose and they will each be rewarded according to their labor for we uh, for we are co-workers in God's service now there's a couple things that I need to point out to this once again I need us to recognize that when we start to minister and deal with someone an individual it is not our job to make them grow we can minister into their lives. We can be a blessing unto them. We can do whatever we can for them. But our responsibility is not to make them grow. Only God can do that. Because let me tell you, if you mess around and try to force them to grow when it is not their time and it is not their season, then you can turn around and mess up something that had great potential because you were operating outside of your purpose. You were only the waterer. You were only the planter. The other thing that God said and through this is that when we do what we do, we don't have to worry about the, uh, about the results. We don't have to worry. See, sometimes we get thinking that, oh, I failed my job if that investment that I put into this person does not pan out. And so we, we double down and we try to go harder and try and pour more into them and invest more into them because we think we have to make them grow. And we think that my job was to make them grow and if I don't do it right, then I'm not going to be blessed. 
But did you read what the scripture said? Let me read it for you a little bit more closely so that you could get this. It says, the one plants and the one waters have one purpose, and they will each be rewarded according to their what? According to what? Did it say you were going to be blessed according to the results? Did it say you were going to be blessed because the seed grew? You are going to be judged and rewarded and blessed based on your labor. That means when you invest into something that is of God, regardless of how successful it is, you will still be blessed. God is going to say, I am going to bless you because you put in the labor. So we don't have to worry about the results. What we have to worry about is when God said invest, did you invest? And then we allow, sit back and let God be God in the situation. Let God do what God does most best, which is to grow and which is to magnify and to make things great. So we have to understand that we have to know, have the right expectations when we have begin to invest. The other thing that we have to understand is that it's not about doing these grand gestures. Oftentimes we think that we have to do all these great things, but we don't really go into it with the right mindset. You can give a million dollars to God, but if your heart is not right, then that investment isn't going to net you anything in the kingdom of God. I don't care what you did, if it is not a, with the right heart and with the right spirit, then that investment is going to be wasted. You might as well have taken that money and buried it in the ground. Because if you don't have the right heart, if you didn't give with the right mindset to be pleasing unto God, to just be a servant unto God, then your investment is wasted. I'm trying to educate you so don't you don't spend your time and your money and your efforts and it's not going to grow you anything. Let me show you something. Let me show you one more thing in the word of God. You see, because we're trying to get investments in things and God is saying, uh, what is your mindset? Like, for example, when you go and you see a homeless person on the street, and you give them $10. Are you giving them that $10 with an expectation that if I give this homeless person over here that doesn't have a home, barely has any clothes, you could tell he doesn't have any food, do you give him $10 because you expect to get $12 some back somehow? Do you expect that person to give you an increase on your investment? No, you do it from the bottom of your heart because it's the right thing to do. You do it because you see somebody in need and you want to be a blessing and a help unto them. And you do it because you have it within you to be able to do because God has blessed you to have an extra $10, to have an increase to give unto somebody else. But if you give with a mindset of always giving so you can get something back in return, then God can't bless that. And it doesn't matter how much you give, it won't be looked at by God as though it's something great. And so I was reading a scripture, and the scripture was talking about um, a situation in Mark, the 12th chapter, the 41st verse through the 44th verse. And so when I looked at the scripture, it says the following. It says, Jesus sat down opposite the place where the offerings were being put and watched the crowd putting the, their money into the temple treasure. Many rich people threw in large amounts. Say rich people threw in large amounts. Now I've seen a lot of rich people try and buy their way to a, into a lot of things. They give money to all kinds of charities and all kinds of things, all in order as a way of trying to make them feel better, make them feel good sometimes. 
But it doesn't matter, once again, if you put all that money in there and you're still the most vile and dirty person and, 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 and corrupt individual. That's not going to save you if you put that money in there. Only God can save you. You can't save yourself by investing in, in all these other things. And so these people were coming, and they were putting all these large amounts of money in, and they thought they were doing something special. And then the word of God says, but, say but. But a poor widow came and put in two very small copper coins worth only two cents. Say two cents. She only put in two cents, people. And these people were putting in great amounts. And God stopped everything. And he called his disciples over to, I mean, Jesus stopped everything. And he called his disciples to him. Jesus said, truly I tell you, the poor widow has put more into the treasury than all the others. They all gave out of their wealth, but she gave out of her poverty, put in everything all she had to give. Everything she had to give, she gave unto God. Only two cents did she give. Now, one of the last things I wanted to talk about is something God has showed on, put on my heart. He said, there is something called an exchange rate. There's an exchange rate that happens. See, an exchange rate works like this. If I am giving you a Canadian dollar versus an American dollar, the Canadian dollar is not as worth as much. So in order to figure out how much you should get, there is an exchange rate which tells you how much that Canadian dollar is worth. Now, the same thing God said applies in his spiritual kingdom. He said sometimes when we go to invest in certain things, when we invest into the things of God, he adds a multiplication to the, to the equation. So when I go and I invest in the things of God with the right spirit, with the right mind, with the right attitude and do it as according to what God says to do, he adds a special increase into that so that it is counted to our account in heavenly places. So even though when I go and I say, I'm just going to go and I'm going to call somebody and say hello. It may seem like a very insignificant thing to do, but God says, you know what? I'm going to add something to your account in heaven for your due diligence, for the fact that you thought about somebody else. When you see somebody that has a need in the church and you say, you know what, I want to go and buy you something because God put you on my heart. God says, I'm going to put a, a little special addition in your account. And every time that we will want to stop pleasing God and serving God, but we press through anyway and we show up at church on a cloudy day and we say, God, I'm going to push my way through. God says, I'm going to add a little bit of extra to your retirement account. God says there is an exchange rate that is happening every time you begin to invest into the things of God. You see, in the summertime, many people stop falling away. We call that the summertime blues. Everybody decides that, ah, it's a little bit too bright out to go to church. I think I'm going to go and go to the beach. Or, I know I've been in it myself. It's nice and sunny out. I think I want to go play some golf. But then and I hear other people say, you know what, today's a good time to go to the mall. But some people say, God, I know I really want to do this, but God, know what I'm going to do is that. And you show up in the house of God, even though you're tired, even though you're weary, even though you had a tough week, even though everything in your body is saying, stay home, you press your way through. God said, I'm going to add a multiplier to your efforts. I'm going to add a multiplier to your commitment. I'm going to add a multiplier to your dedication to the things of God. God says your retirement plan is looking really, really good right now because you invested in me so I am going to invest in you hallelujah hallelujah oh 
Hallelujah. Your investment plan is looking mighty good. He said, I'm going to put a mighty, mighty multiplier in your investments. But you got to invest in the right things. Are you investing in your church? Are you investing in your family? I've seen a lot of families where all the people did was invest only into their church. And as a result, they didn't spend any time in their families. And today their families are broken. See, in the, in the financial realm, that's called diversification. You don't take everything and put it in one thing. You diversify. You got to invest in your family just like you do in the church. You got to invest in your friends just like you do in your family. You got to invest in your ministry just like you do in your church. You have to diversify your investments so that you are being a complete minister of God. You got to be a whole minister of God. You can't just focus in on one thing. We got to be a complete individual in God. Diversify your portfolio. We have to go and learn to do things right. Because what is going to happen, and I don't want to see it happen, is what happens is if we don't invest in our spiritual retirement plan, if we don't continue to pour into the things of God, then someday when you get to heaven and you think you're going to be able to retire, he's going to say, depart from me, I knew you not. You don't have a bank account here. You never invested here. You must be somewhere else. And I hate to tell you where that other place is. You don't want to invest there. You don't want to invest there. You don't want to be turned away. So I beg of you, I plead of you, what are you investing in? How does your retirement plan look? They sometimes will check in with you every now and then if you have a good advisor and they say that's a wellness check to see where you are according to the plan that you had started in the beginning. Today, this is your wellness check. Have you been following the plan that God has prepared for you? Have you been investing like you said you would when you started your program? When we get started with the program, we need to make all kinds of promises to God. Man, if we all follow through on the promises that we made to God, my God, they would have, we'd have to hold five services every Sunday. But over time, through overwhelming situations, we forget the commitment that we made to God. We forget the investment plan that we, we, we made with God. We sat down. We had a one-on-one -on -one with God, and he told you, if you do this, I will do that. And we made a plan as to where we were to go. But somewhere along the way, we fell off the wagon. And the thing about it is when you fall off the wagon, sometimes it's hard to get back on. You stop saying stuff like, well, it's too late now. I'm already off the plan. I might as well go on and give up now. Then you start using that money and that time and that effort that you were supposed to give God towards something else. God said, no. Get back on the, get back on the wagon. We can, we can devise a new plan. I'm still willing to work with you. I'm not done with you. It is not too late. But we have to make sure that we are investing into the right things. So today, again, this is your wellness check. Where are you in your spiritual plan? Are you investing as you should be? Is your portfolio looking good? Because I don't know about you, but I'm looking to retire early. I'm looking to retire early. 
I'm looking to be able to put my investments in God early and pile up enough that I could say, I know that I know that I know. See, that's the good thing about the old people. They get to a place where they put so much time and invested so much in God, you can't convince them any other that they know where they're going. They know they're going to, church, to heaven. You, they, 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 just, they just be looking so peaceful, they just be sitting back chilling. Like, I know where I'm going. I don't know where you're going. I'm flush with cash when it comes to my spiritual apartment. I know what I got. I got two mansions in the sky. One for me to live in, one for me to put my clothes in. They all set. Because they invested wisely with wisdom over time. And soon will be our time to reap what we have sown. Let us all stand. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let us bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord God, for the word that you have given us today, Lord God, about our, our retirement plan, Lord God, what we are investing in, Lord God. Lord, we desire, Lord, to make sure that we are investing into what you have called us to invest in, Lord God, so that we are putting our, our, our attentions, our effort, Lord God, into what you want us to, Lord God. We want to make sure that our retirement plan looks good, Lord Jesus, not just on paper, Lord God, Lord, but what real strong investments, Lord God, that are going to have meaning, that are going to have merit, that are going to stand, Lord God. Lord, we want this wellness check to go well, Lord Jesus. Lord, put us with the right heart to serve you well, Lord Jesus, in the name of God. Lord, and we pray that we have learned from past mistakes, Lord God, not to invest in bad investments, Lord. Show us what you would have us do, Lord God. Show us what you would have us invest in, Lord God, so that we will be ready when the time comes. Lord, so this we ask and we pray in your name, Lord God. And today we also pray, Lord, that if there's anybody here today that wants to know you, that does not know you but wants to know you, Lord, then let them know today is their day. Lord, and maybe someone walked with you, but they've kind of fallen away and they want to be returned back unto you. Let them know today is also today, Lord. So today we give this all unto you and we give you all the glory and the praise. In your name we pray. Amen, amen.